Treatment of portal hypertension. Any cirrhotic patient should be screened for presence of viruses. The screening program of uh, the patient is endoscopic screening. Abar GIT endoscopy. Therefore, endoscopic screening for viruses should be done for all cirrhotic patients. Why? According to the screening program, we detect two classes of patients. The patients in early liver disease with no also, fagial viruses or patients with osophageal viruses. Therefore, the aiming of screening program is to detect presence of osophageal viruses or not. If there are no viruses, this is an early liver disease for only medical treatment. The aim in this early liver disease is to stop the liver disease at this degree of liver disease and to avoid progress of the disease and to avoid deterioration of liver function. How? Only medically. Avoid, avoid anything or any factor damage the liver. The patient should avoid alcohol and avoid take of any hepatotoxic drug. Give the patient liver tonics as vitamin K, vitamin B complex with excess carbohydrate diet. Give the patient omeprazole to avoid hyperacidity or reflux osophagitis, which is very common in patients with liver disease due to lack of activation, inactivation of histamine and gastrin. Follow up of this patient by upper GIT endoscopy after two years to detect any viruses appear in this patient. This is the first class of patient, patient with liver disease, patient with portal hypertension without viruses. But according to the screening program, if you detect viruses, the viruses may be silent viruses, or active viruses. Silent viruses means viruses never bleed before. Viruses never bleed before this is early disease. For medical treatment as before, avoid alcohol, hepatotoxic drugs, plus liver tonics, omeprazole, and we add to the medical treatment beta adrenergic blocker like propranolol or better long acting nadolol. The effect of this beta adrenergic blocker decreases the blood flow, the arterial blood flow to the gut and subsequently decreases the venous return from the gut. Decrease of venous return from the gut, decrease the portal blood flow, and decrease the blood flow to the viruses. Avoid distension of the viruses and decrease the possibility of bleeding viruses. If the silent viruses are small, follow up of the patient by another upper GIT endoscopy after one year. If the viruses are large, silent viruses, 
but large versus grade three or impending rupture with high risk rupture grade four the patient is liable for bleeding and silent, silent versus in any time in grade three or grade four will be converted to active versus. Therefore, it is recommended to prevent the bleeding by prophylactic banding. This is a technique of banding which will be discussed in detail later on. Prophylactic banding of any large viruses or any viruses liable for rupture like red sign or viruses over viruses. The second possibility is active viruses. Active viruses can be classified into two class. You will see a patient with active viruses either during the attack of hematemesis, and this is a surgical emergency. Or you may see the patient in between the attacks of hematemesis. What is the difference? Sure, during the attack of hematemesis, you will see this patient in emergency room, in ICU, because this is a surgical emergency. There is bleeding now. But patient coming to you in between the attack, the patient is apparently well-being and they come to you as out patient problem. Let us discuss the most important, which is active versus during the attack. <clears throat> there is bleeding now. <coughs> First of all, admission and the, and the anti-shock measures. And usually admission of this patient to the ICU. And shock measures include complete rest in bed, worms, clear patent airway, oxygen inhalation by mask or by nasal tubes, sedation by Valium, never give this patient morphine or bethidine, which are metabolized in the liver. And if you give the patient morphine, this morphine will not be metabolized, will circulating, circulating, circulating in the blood of this patient with brain toxicity and morphine toxicity leading to this. Insert a full caster, which is sure we all know, full caster is very important in any shock division to detect the urine output hourly. And this is uh, your mirror <coughs> about of the efficiency of your transfusion. Good urine output means proper transfusion. <coughs> if urine output observed through the police caster is uh, excessive urine output, more than the normal, this means over transfusion. And if urine output is below the normal, this means that the transfusion is high transfusion. Insert a white border cannula or CVB. Blood sample is taken for complete blood picture, liver functions, coagulation study, and the cross matching for at least four units of fresh blood. Restore the blood volume, first of all by intravenous fluid, then by fresh blood transfusion. 
it is better fresh because fresh blood transfusion is rich in coagulation factor. And to avoid the stored blood, because it's stored blood containing ammonia and excessive stored blood if taken by this patient, it may lead to ammoniacal encephalopathy. The most dangerous uh, problem in this patient, and maybe the cause of this in this patient, is ammoniacal encephalopathy. As we mentioned before, uh, ammoniacal encephalopathy occurs in this patient due to passage of blood to the gut. Propagation of blood, the blood is sent downward to the gut. The most dangerous is blood reaching the colon and the bacterial flora in the intestine, especially the colon. And the effect of bacterial flora in hemoglobin and the proteins in the blood leading to release of huge amount of ammonia. Ammonia pass to the circulation, affect the brain centers leading to ammoniacal encephalopathy. How to prevent this mechanism? First of all, rail tube. Pass a rail tube to the stomach and <laughs> continuous suction to avoid propagation of blood downward to the intestine. And wash the colon by repeated enema to avoid presence of blood with the bacterial flora in the colon. Decrease bacterial flora by neomycin for uh, 500 milligram every four hours to reduce the intestinal flora. Neomycin, we all know, is one of the best intestinal antiseptic. Give the patient lecturus. The lecturus is split, is, is split in the intestine to lactose, which causes diarrhea. Sure, we need diarrhea in this patient. Diarrhea means passage of intestinal content rapidly. Passage of intestinal content, including the blood, rapidly to the outside and to avoid presence of blood and the colon for a long time in the intestine. Therefore, lactose causing diarrhea with rapid expulsion of blood to outside with the stool. And lactulose also is spread, split in the intestine to lactic acid. Lactic acid acidifies the colon. Acidifies the colon and inhibit the intestinal flora. Lactic acid is acid. And the ammonia in the lumen of the colon and the ammonia in the blood vessels in the wall of the colon, alkaline. And the lactic acid will unite with ammonia in the lumen of the colon and absorb ammonia in the bloodstream to be ex expulsed downward with feces. Therefore, lactic acid help to extract the ammonia, which is the cause of, of ammoniacal encephalopathy, from the lumen and from the blood stream. This is very important to prevent the cause of this. The cause of this uh, in this patient during the attack of hematemesis is hypovolemic shock, which is treated first by the intravenous fluid, fresh blood transfusion, etc., and the end shock measures, and the ammoniacal encephalopathy, which should be prevented by rail tube suction 
repeated enema, neomycin, and lecturus. We should correct the coagulation defect in this patient because the coagulation defect aggravate the bleeding and leading to persistence of the bleeding. Therefore, vitamin K by injection and fresh frozen plasma. Fresh frozen plasma, very, very rich in coagulation factors. Also, never forget hyperacidity in this patient and the reflux of which may be the cause of bleeding viruses. Therefore, never, never forget, as in any emergency, intravenous omeprazole to stop gastric acid. As any patient with shock and bleeding, put the patient under close observation for the vital signs, pulse, temperature, blood pressure, respiration, urine output through the foolish caster, CVB, and the amount of bleeding as indicated by the rail tube suction. Now we reach to the most important point. The most important point in this patient is measures to stop bleeding, which will be discussed in the next video.